Within this video lesson we shall connect the two SATA devices, learn how to use the utility called the BIOS and to make the final connections within the computer. Here we can see four SATA ports, each one can support one SATA device. If we look closely we can see that these ports are numbered as 1, 2, 3 and 4. It is not obligatory to use them in this order but logically. If we remember the connectors on these devices have an L shape. So the SATA signal cables are also shaped in this manner, allowing the cables to be plugged in one way only. Locate SATA port 1 and connect the signal cable. The other end of the cable should now be plugged into the hard drive. If you are struggling to plug these cables in, check the alignment. Plug the next SATA signal cable into the SATA port marked as 2. The other end into the DVD-ROM drive. Connect the mains cable, monitor and this time a keyboard. Remember most of these components will only fit in one way, the keyboard is no exception. Switch on and check that the fans rotate. Now for example there is no difference in the startup screen, however this does depend upon the manufacturer of the motherboard. Now we need to configure the BIOS. BIOS is an acronym of Basic Input Output System that contains a log of certain items connected to the computer. It also contains certain instructions that the computer must obey when it boots or when it starts. The BIOS is not concerned what operating system has been installed, it could be any of the Microsoft operating systems or any variation of Linux. Its job is to make sure that the basic settings are correct. For example, is there an input device connected like a keyboard and an output device like a monitor connected? Let's switch on the computer and see what messages and listen to any sounds that may appear. It has now come to a halt and prompted the user to insert boot media. But there was a message even before we reach this point and also a single bleep. This time we shall turn the computer off then back on. Just one point here before you go any further, switching a device like a computer off then on again very quickly can sometimes cause problems with the sensitive electronic components. Always switch off, wait a few seconds then turn it back on. We shall pause the computer at the very first message. To do this we shall use the pause break key. Here we have pressed the pause key and the computer has stopped at this screen and will not continue until we press a key. If we look closer we shall find the menu. The option we are interested in right now is press F2 or Dell to run BIOS setup. So we can use the F2 key or the Dell or the delete key. More often than not it will be the Dell key. It is important to remember that not all startup screens are the same and in some cases some messages may not appear in this order or may not appear at all. The one thing we can be sure of is that a message will prompt us on how to enter the setup or the BIOS utility. If you missed which key it is, a simple trick is to shut down the computer, disconnect the keyboard, then when you switch the computer back on, in most cases a message will appear similar to keyboard error press Dell to enter setup. With the keyboard connected you will need to start tapping the required key as soon as the message press Dell to enter setup appears. When we say tapping we mean just that, don't hold the key down as the BIOS may mistake this as a sticking key. Press the key then release it and leave a one second gap between each tap. If you miss it then restart the computer. Here we shall turn the computer off then back on. Remember to wait that few seconds before switching it back on and then when we see the first screen we shall start tapping the Dell key. The computer will continue to boot but enter the BIOS setup utility. We are only going to look at the very basics of the BIOS to begin with. There are just three settings that we shall be dealing with. Date and time, 
storage devices and the boot sequence. All BIOS setup utilities are basically the same but you may find a variation in the menu settings so you may have to do a little searching to find certain parameters. This screen is split up into three areas, the top menu, the right menu and the fields that we can configure in the centre. If this is the first time you have viewed these screens you may find it a little daunting but with some practice and a bit of experience you will soon master any BIOS setup utility. The first observation is the different text colours that are used. Blue is for the instructions or certain fields that can be configured. White is a field that has been selected, like right now, is the hour. Grey text normally means it cannot be changed. Let's deal with the basics, how to move through the menus. Look at the right hand side, at the bottom, it tells us by using the right and the left directional keys we can move through different screens. These screens refer to the top menu. Here we have pressed the right directional key and moved to the OC Tweaker menu. Notice how the other menus have also changed. Here we have pressed the right directional key again and selected the advanced menu. If we press the same key four more times we shall have selected the exit menu. As expected we can use the left directional key to move back through the screen menu. We are now back at the original menu. Notice the message on the top right hand side, use enter to select a field. A field is one part of an item. An item is system time or system date in this menu. The field is just one part of the item, as an example right now the hour is highlighted in the system time, therefore if we want to select the next field, which is the minutes, then we would press the enter key. Pressing the enter key again, and we shall be at the seconds. Now if we press the enter key one more time, it will bring us back to the hour. So to move through fields in an item, we press the enter key. We can also use the tab key. Here we have pressed it three times. So the tab key also does the same thing as the enter key, allowing us to move from one field to another. It also tells us by using two keys, the shift and the tab key will also allow us to select a field, but this time in reverse. Here we have held down the shift key and pressed the tab key three times. If we refer to this menu, we can see that by using the up and down directional keys, we can select an item. Here we pressed the down directional key and selected the month. Now we shall use the up directional key to select the first item. To change a field, we can use the plus or minus keys. You will find on a full size QWERTY keyboard two plus keys and you can use either one. Here we have pressed the plus key five times and it has advanced the hour by five hours. If we press the minus key five times, it would return the time back to the original setting. As an example, we shall set the time to 5.30 pm or 17.30. To do this, we press the minus key twice. Now we want to move to the minutes or to the next field. To do this, we can press the tab or enter key. Since we want to set the minutes to 30, we press the plus key five times. The date in this example wants to be set to the 7th of October 2012. So we first press the down directional key once. The date format is month followed by day, then year. So we press the minus key twice. To move to the next field, we press the tab or enter key and press the plus key once. Before we move on, notice a couple of things here. First, we can see the type of CPU we are using, along with the speed. Also, when we install the RAM, it was put into the DIMM slot on the motherboard, which was labelled A1. It also tells us the size of the RAM is 2GB and that the B1 slot is empty. All this information can be useful when fault finding or upgrading. Next we need to check that the BIOS has correctly recognised the two SATA devices we fitted. Here we use the right directional key to select advanced menu. The two devices should be found in the storage configuration menu so we shall use the down directional key three times. Look over to the lower right menu. To go to the sub menu we should press enter. The two SATA devices was connected to SATA 1 and SATA 2 and here we can see that they have been recognised. There is no hard and fast rule to say we could not have used the other SATA connections 
as we said, it's just logical to use the first set of ports than the others. We can get further information about the hard drive if we select it using the down directional key followed by pressing the enter key. Here we see that the hard drive has been connected to SATA port 1 and the size is 500 gigabytes. Remember when the text is in grey it cannot normally be changed. To exit this menu we press the escape key. On the SATA 2 port we connected the DVD-ROM drive. Just one point here, although the device that has been fitted in this computer is a DVD drive, most biases will list them as a CD-ROM. This is just a generic name given to most optical drives. If we press the down directional key then enter, we can get further information about the device. Once again refer to the right hand menu. To return to the last menu, we press the escape key. Then once again to get back to the main menu. Next we need to check the boot option so we press the right directional key twice. Here we find the boot option configuration. Under this it tells us that the computer will boot from the SATA 3M device. This is the hard drive and since the hard drive is currently blank then when the computer reboots nothing will happen. The operating system we shall be installing will be on DVD so we need to change the boot priority. Pressing enter will give us our options. By using the down directional key we can select the DVD-ROM drive and then enter. Now our first boot is the DVD-ROM drive. That's it for the BIOS so we need to exit. Using the right directional key we can select the last option, the top menu which is exit. Here we can exit and save changes in which case all the adjustments we have made to the date and time etc will be applied and the computer will reboot. Or we can choose discard changes and exit which means any settings will be lost and the computer will reboot. Since we wish to save and exit we simply press the enter key. Here we will have the last option to cancel. By pressing the enter key the computer will save the settings and reboot. Once again we still get the same message since the computer attempted to boot from the DVD-ROM drive which is at this time empty. Now that our settings have been saved we shall not have to alter them again unless we make some significant changes that will affect the BIOS. We now need to disconnect the computer and remove the mains lead, keyboard and monitor. Finally the last of the internal connections will need to be completed. Here are the rest of the front panel switches and LEDs. We connected the power switch earlier but to clarify how these are connected we have disconnected it. Here we shall refer to the manual and follow how these are connected. That's the power switch. We can see that this occupies pins 6 and 7. Notice where the orange wire is on the lower number. Now the reset switch that occupies 5 and 8. Again notice where the blue wire is on pin 5 or the lower pin number. The power LED is green and white and they're on pin 2 and 3. The coloured wire is on the lower pin number. Finally the hard drive LED or HDD LED on pin 1 and 4. The general rule is the coloured wire should always be connected to the lower pin number. Another general tip most lower numbers are all pointing in one direction. In other words, if the lower number on this connector was on the right, then all the coloured wires would also have been on the right. The case we are using in this example has a number of USB ports on the front panel, and this is the plug. Notice that one of the holes in the plug has been filled. Now if we check the USB connector on the motherboard, one of the pins seems to be missing, so this plug will only fit in one way. Another point here is that there are two USB ports and we are using the one with the lowest number. The final plug is for the audio. It is very similar to the USB plug but has a different hole filled. So it is almost impossible to plug this into the wrong connector. Next we shall look at installing an operating system. 